Hi everyone, this is Kylie. Today I'm filming a video how to change your color without removing the previous color. Now, this will be just kind of an instructional voiceover while you watch. I am demonstrating right now how I am pre-toning before bleaching my roots. I wouldn't usually do this, but since I knew I had a lot of pink to cut from my hair, I decided to do it before and then I knew that I would still have to do it after. I chose to go this route because I know that I'm actually coloring my hair significantly darker this time and you can apply however much pigment you need to to cancel out a color as long as you're aware that you will end up making it darker in that process. I just got my roots bleached out by my coworker. I came home to color my own hair. This is what my roots look like. My level 9 to 10 pale roots. I have some short pieces in here. <laughs> That's from my extensions. We have my blonde hair. We have this darker band of pink and purple. We get paler from here to here, and then very porous is right here. The way I'm going to counteract this color correction is I'm going to put silver on my roots, and then I'm going to put mint on my mids, and then I'm going to mix them together and drag that through my ends with a little bit of conditioner so that it all just kind of evens out. And it's not going to be the most perfect. It's not going to be like perfect flat silver but it's definitely going to be closer to more normal than this currently is. Today is the last day of the year, last day of 2020, yay! But then uh, tomorrow will be the new year, and then the next day I also have off. So I have two more days after today to fix my hair if, uh, if it's too weird. What I'm expecting is it's going to be a little funky, then I wash it once, it'll even out and look even better than the first rinse. From there I'll put my all-over color on it. The all-over color will probably be like a smoky denim. I'm inspired by the show Hilda. If any of you have seen Hilda, this show is on Netflix. The intro music was made by Grimes. I love Grimes. It's about this girl who lives in this fantastical forest wonderland with elves and fairies and ghosts and rock trolls. I love it so much. So I'm inspired by her hair and I want to do something similar. Here is the green, like a lichen, you know, on the trees. Statue of Liberty green. And then this one right here is kind of like a very lavender undertoned silver. This one is mostly Silver Lining by Lunar Tides. And this one is mostly Neverland by Arctic Fox. And they're both very diluted. So if you're changing your hair color and you hope to go lighter than it already is, cutting or canceling the color isn't necessarily a good idea because you're probably better off gently removing your hair. When I refer to hair as being lifted, that's either with bleach or with a remover that lifts the hair. Not all color removers will lift, but many of them do. Instead of using an actual official remover, I will use a cream oil-based lightener and the lowest developer possible. In my case, that's six volume. But I actually have an entire video about that, or um, I have a few videos about that. Click on that card that pops up right above, how to remove color, as well as how to prevent fade out in color. Because all those tips are the same, you just do the opposite. I have been clarifying my hair with a non-color safe shampoo for about three weeks. I've been using Nioxin clarifying shampoo. Depending on what color you want to get out, you should be mixing and applying the opposite color on the color wheel. Like if you have orange hair, you should be putting blue on it. If you have yellow hair, you should be putting purple on it. If you have teal hair, you should be putting peach on it. And um, in my case, if it's pink, I have to use green. And the reason why I am shampooing my hair a lot beforehand is because you want to get as much of that excess pigment out as possible so that your formula you're mixing can be a more pastel color, which will cut it at a lighter level. If you're covering hair that's dark, you're not going to be able to cancel it out very well. 
if you're mixing a pastel color to cancel it. I actually shampooed my hair about three times every time I took a shower and I followed that up with a really moisturizing deep conditioner just because uh, anytime you're stripping your hair of something it's really dehydrating. This pink right here is too dark to actually cancel into the level of what's up here. The point of me canceling it out with green anyways is so that I can just mute it down, get it as neutral and smoky as possible, and then at whatever level that is, I'm gonna cover it with denim. I'm sick of these bright colors on me lately. I'm just like, I just want something dark. I always want something dark at this time of year, like it's New Year's, and last year I had literally just colored my hair black, but I've already worked so hard to get all this blonde that I just don't have the energy to go dark again because I'm going to want to be light again later. I colored my roots silver first because it's the most resistant hair and it needs to sit on the longest. And then I went through and I saturated the middle pink band with the green dye the most because that area needed the most cancellation. I was taking horizontal sections that are about half an inch thick or less so it can be easily saturated. I added some conditioner to the formula before I saturated all of the ends uh, because they're more porous so you don't really need all that pigment that you're putting in the mid shaft to also be in the ends since the ends will just grab it much faster. <laughs> this is the result. As you can see it does look a little bit crazy but it's a lot better than yellow roots and bright pink ends. My bangs are pretty much fully silver. Yeah it's really not too bad but this is going to be a good enough canvas to be honest just for just for this color to be put on my hair. I had been shampooing out this magenta for like a month. <laughs> Eventually I was like, you know what, it's just not going to come out and I'm not going to bleach it and I don't feel like removing it with anything else so I just used color theory to cancel it out. This portion of the video is demonstrating how I mixed together the colors to create a smoky, dark, navy color. If you follow exactly what I'm doing in this, you're going to get totally lost, so I'm going to explain to you exactly how you can recreate this color at home. All you need is three colors from Arctic Fox. Aquamarine by Arctic Fox, which is their teal color. A little bit of sterling in there, their silver color. If you want to make it even more smoky, use the opposite color to blue, orange. So mix in a teeny tiny little bit of sunset orange in there and definitely just keep mixing small amounts until you reach the desired color because if you accidentally put too much teal in there or you accidentally put too much orange in there, you're gonna ruin the entire bowl of color and you might have to start over with a whole new bowl. In that case, I definitely recommend getting a spare empty jar and filling it with the old color because this color does not go bad. I, I'm sure it does have an expiration date, but uh, you shouldn't be throwing away color that you haven't used just because you don't want it. Definitely package it up and save it for later. You could always give it to a friend if it's a color you would never personally wear, or if one day you color your hair black, you could always mix little bits of other colors in there because it's gonna get eaten up by that color. But in the video, what you can see me doing is blending together a whole bunch of other colors that I had from previous jars of color. These are all from previous dye jobs that I had done and over mixed my formulas. I really like to mix way more color than I need so that I can always go back and uh, save some color for a touch up if I ever need to refresh my color or if I run out of dye halfway through my application I will always have more of the same exact formula because when you're customizing a formula with more than one or two colors you might forget the ratio that you mixed and it'll be extremely difficult to go back and try to recreate the same exact thing. Well, I just finished up mixing this formula and I'm so sad that I didn't film the last part because I put about three like globs like this big of Sunset Orange by Arctic Fox. 
in there it smoked it all out so it was really really vibrant before this this was kind of the formula that I had it, it's gonna look like this even though this is from a previous dye job like that but maybe even smokier this orange canceled out a lot of the vibrancy in the blue and at first when you start mixing it a little bit like this it started looking brown and then as I mixed it in all the way it's just so much smokier now I love this this is what I was looking for. I didn't really want it to look too teal or too blue. Since I am going a darker color, I'm just avoiding using bleach or any harsh removers because eventually, if you want to lighten your hair ever again, you will need to use a bleach or a remover. And if you do it every single time you change your color, it's just not going to be healthy. Um, I change my color once a month, so I try to stay within that side of the color wheel. So if I'm going pink my next color should be purple or peach uh, but in this case it's blue because I'm able to cover it up by canceling it out first if I wanted to do a much more vibrant color I wouldn't have canceled it like this because obviously having a more gray canvas is going to desaturate your colors but my goal today was a really smoky muted and desaturated navy blue if i wanted a very vibrant blue i would just have to wait for my color to fade even more or just go ahead and remove it i left this on my head for about two hours you should be processing a semi-permanent color for at least 25 minutes if you're in a rush but you can leave it into your hair for probably up to five hours, depending on how much time you have in your day. Um, I generally just like to do about two hours. It's enough time for me to be able to uh, do some chores and clean my room before I go rinse it out in the shower. I also don't shampoo my hair after I color it with a semi-permanent because it's only going to make that color less vibrant. I just rinse extremely well by applying light pressure on my scalp with my fingers and massaging my head as I rinse it. I also put a little bit of moisturizing conditioner on my hair and I actually massage that into my scalp too since my hair has been recently bleached so my scalp is kind of dehydrated and with that conditioner I massage it into my scalp just to make sure one more time I don't have any color against my scalp and that'll be an efficient way to wash your hair actually because you don't always need to use shampoo. In the end this ended up perfect. I was really happy with the results and after this color washed out I even reapplied it but I put more orange in the formula to make it even more desaturated and smoky. Alright, well these are my results. Thank you guys so much for watching. Stay epic everyone. Go ahead and check out my uh, playlist that pops up at the end of this video here because I made an entire series for beginners on how to color your hair at home. Let me know in the comments if there's anything else I didn't explain well. See you guys!